What's going on guys? Welcome back to the vlog. Today we are replacing the brake rotors and brake pads on the Z. Uh, the stock or the ones that came on the car when I bought it were tremendously worn and one of the front ones was warped and they had a big lip on them. So they needed to be replaced. So I bought this big, or not a big brake kit, but this brake kit off Concept Z Performance where it comes with all four rotors, pads, and uh, steel braided brake lens, which we won't be putting on today, but we'll put these on later, as well as a full uh, two of these for uh, brake fluid. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that right there now. And then also while we have the passenger side jacked up, we're going to fix a couple leaks in the exhaust that happened that we noticed when we took off the uh, test pipe to install that wide band. So we're gonna fix those up too. So one of the first things you wanna do for this is make sure to take the cap off the brake fluid reservoir right here or on any car really, just so uh, when you push in the pistons, uh, the pressure gets relieved and it'll actually allow the level to rise and the pistons to come in instead of having a stopping force. And then obviously jack up the cars, then remove the wheels. And because this car has two different types of locking uh, lug nuts on them, I have to use two keys. So let's get these off real quick. Okay, so we have the stock, or this isn't stock obviously, but the rotor and the caliper, this is the stuff that I bought with the car. This right here, I don't know if you can see with the camera, but this has a huge lip on it right here, indicating that it's time to replace these. And then these pads are also super, super worn down. And what came with the kit, which actually wasn't supposed to, it was on uh, Concept Z's uh, mistake, they sent me new hardware, so a new spring here and new these little pins right here. Now these are not slider pins, just to make that very clear. These pins are clearly only here to hold this in place. And then we also have to remove this little uh, Carter spring style thing right here that just goes in the back of the pins to hold them in. So we're just gonna go ahead and disassemble all this right here and get this uh, caliper off. In order to take this caliper off, what you're gonna have to remove is two 19 millimeter bolts, one right here, one right here, and also you're gonna to wanna to remove two uh, 12 millimeter bolts that hold this bracket onto the caliper, or else this hard line right here will not allow you to actually remove the caliper alone. So you just gotta be wary of that, that those two bolts need to come out, and they're right up here. Yeah, right up here. Okay, so one of the first things you want to do is pop these out right here. And you can mostly just do these with your fingertips. And if they're being a little stubborn, what you can do is actually up here on the front part of the pins, you can turn these a little bit with the screwdriver to better align them so they'll pop out. And then this little end right here connects into this little hole, which is easier to take out once we get this little metal spring bracket out. So to take these pins out, just like you see here, all we do is literally just push the end of it with our fingertips, and then it's easier to use a tool like a screwdriver or a pair of needle nose pliers, and then you can just pull this out. But be careful when you unload one, this spring is gonna to wanna to shoot. So make sure to have someone help you or hold this yourself while using a needle nose plier. Now that we have all that, we have access to the brake pads themselves. And you can see right here that all you really have to do, you can just pull them out from right here if you're just changing the brake pads by themselves. However, since once again, we're changing the rotor as well, this has to come off. So we can go ahead and just remove these right now, but this ultimately the caliper is coming off. All right, so what we can do here now is just pull out the pads here. And these right here are shims that came with the kit for this, uh, I'm not sure what type of brakes are in here. Obviously they are a ceramic or a metallic type, but the ones that we bought are already shimmed up, so we don't need to reuse these shims or anything. But uh, we're gonna put those in later, so it's not that big of a deal to use these right now. So we got the caliper off. I just set it back here for right now. It makes a perfect little ledge to sit it on. What I'm gonna do right now is just take off the rotor here and also we are going to collapse 
the four pistons in this and no you cannot rent a, a brake kit from AutoZone or O'Reilly's or whatever to collapse them. It will not fit inside the caliper and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Look how shiny and new. So we're actually using a big C-clamp right here to push each individual piston down. Yes, there are different ways to doing this, but this is actually a very easy way to do it. And I'm also using a piece of cardboard just right here to pr help protect so it doesn't scratch up the uh, caliper itself. And as it starts tightening, you'll see that piston depress. Now you gotta be careful and double check because sometimes when you depress one, it'll go in and then another one will start moving and when you depress another one, that one that you currently already have depressed might slip out a little bit. So you gotta keep an eye on that. Everybody meet Zoe. I thought, I thought you were gonna take a picture. The, the next Zoe on the YouTube. Another dog. So we took off the rear tire right here, and as you can see, there's a fatty screw right here and just in the meat. So we're gonna take this up to discount tire real quick where they can patch that because uh, it's kind of a bummer. So we finished up the first one. One thing that wasn't filmed was spraying down the rotor right here with a brake cleaner. It's a good idea to always do that with fresh ones because then it pulls off all the dirt and all the fingerprint grease and everything that's on the rotor. So always make sure to spray it down with some good uh, brake parts cleaner before you actually go and bed the brakes correct. So now it's time to do the rears. Now this one is actually different from the front as in the bolts on the back are actually 17 millimeters. And then the clip is still relatively the same. Just take out this metal one right here. And when you take out the screws, this center metal piece will come out and then you can take the, the pads out right from here if that's all you're doing. But once again, since we're replacing the rotor, we're gonna have to remove the whole caliber by taking off these uh, 17 millimeter bolts right here in the back. So the old back ones here aren't very worn down actually, they're they're pretty good still, but we're still going to change them out. Let's say they're about 50% life left. Let's get that. Doesn't want to focus here. There we go. Yeah, so about 50, 40, 50% left on those pads, but we're going to change them out anyway because that new life. So just like the fronts, now it's time to collapse the pots in the back caliper. But this one only has two, and once again, you cannot use a brake collapsing kit from any auto parts store, they do not fit this. So this C-clamp is always good, especially since it is holding it still. It's not making any twisting or jerking motions on the pot. It always works really well. I'm gonna go ahead and just collapse this in real quick. So the way that the rears work on this is that, can we take that away? It's both, it is not a disc and it's also a drum, but the drum only works the handbrake. And so this needs to be adjusted real quick here. And just to make sure that the handbrake is working well, you can tell that there's still life left in it here. These are practically brand new and they should remain brand new because they're only used for the handbrake. So we're just gonna adjust it real quick. Now that you adjusted it, always throw on the rotor real quick to make sure it fits over. Too far. Yep, that was adjusted too far, so it's too wide open and the rotor won't fit over it. So we're gonna back it off here a couple teeth.
end brake's been adjusted, so let's go ahead and reattach the caliper. So both sides of the car are done with the brakes. Uh, now it's just a waiting game. Discount tire was super busy when I ran that wheel up to him. So it's gonna take them, they said two hours for them to uh, patch the wheel. I get it, first come first serve. But uh, as soon as we get that wheel, we can take the car out, make sure that the brakes are working. Now for the brake pads that we got for this car, they don't have a break-in process. It's The box states that as soon as you get them, you are good to immediately uh, go ahead and start breaking without a bedding process. However, I'm still going to go through a basic bedding process just to double check and make sure everything is good. So we'll get that done as soon as we get the wheel back from discount tire, but while we were sitting here laying the car warm up, making sure that the exhaust was tightened down all the way and there wasn't a leak anymore, I found another vacuum leak. Now this is something that I had prepared for in changing the spark plugs. Since I still do have the spark plugs, I haven't changed them just yet. I'm still waiting on a couple more things before I do that because they are one step colder than these and I don't want them to foul really quickly without the car being able to properly run the spark plugs. But, right here on the balance tube, when I sprayed it with carb cleaner real quick because I heard something, the idle spiked up, indicating that there is a vacuum leak here. And we did buy those O-rings because you do have to take off the balance tube to get to the five and six cylinder spark plugs. So that's a good thing that we already pretty much have that fixed right there. So we just got the tire back from discount tire. The wheel's ready to go on. So let's button this project up, shall we? Okay, now that we have all the brakes and wheels on the car, let's go take it for a little test drive just to see how it's going to be. Just uh, do a little bedding right now, just take it up to about 20, slow down to about five, take it up a little higher, then slow it back down just to make sure that everything's all good and broken in and that all the brakes are working because that would stink if I stepped on the pedal and nothing happened. So we're gonna take it real slow. And no, the title of this video is not clickbait, so here's what's gonna happen. So. At 5,000 subscribers, we're gonna end a giveaway. And that giveaway is for a Cobb Access Port, version three, brand new, for any car that it's available for. So I don't care if you have a GTR, a Speed 3, a Subaru, it doesn't matter. At 5,000 subscribers, we're gonna draw a winner. So. That's the only catch, guys. We have to get the 5,000 subs for this giveaway to end. Until then, I'm gonna keep on pushing it back. However, the sign up for the giveaway is gonna be in the link down below. Go ahead, get your name in. Get all secured for now because uh, I know 5,000 subs is asking for a lot. We're only at 1,600 right now. So it's gonna be a little bit. So that's the next giveaway, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and stayed until the end. And like always, peace out and together to the top.